Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's good to see each and every one of you here. Can you hear me? Yeah, a little too well. It's being fixed, I promise. I was warned. I was just warned that that might happen. Um, So I'll try to speak softly until it uh, is shifting here. Um, But I do want to give you a few, just a couple of announcements. First and foremost, just know that the fellowship um, on Zoom is open and available. Any who would like to join after the worship service, um, you can just uh, click in the link on your constant contact. Also, we have our 122 envelope fundraiser um, happening for nine of our youth heading to the National Youth Gathering in Minneapolis this summer. Uh, We're really, we're excited, but it's hard to get excited as we all just kind of wait, right? And and hoping all goes through well. Uh, We anticipate it will. So we do have our envelopes out on the um, bulletin board outside this door right here. Uh, For those who would like to help and support, um, that can just go right in the offering box if you would uh, be able to do that. Uh, Just put, you simply put the amount that's on the envelope. It's as simple as that. Now you online, you may say, oh, we wish we could help, but we're not there. Guess what? There is a link in your chat and there is, uh, it'll go directly to the envelope giving. You can choose which number you would like and you also can give. So that'll be sent out in the constant contact as well as here in person. And we'll just kind of keep tabs on which envelopes are needing to come down if it is online. Thank you. Um, Just appreciate uh, uh, your consideration uh, as we continue to prepare and be ready for that wonderful trip. At this time, I would invite you to take a deep breath as we gather in the presence of one another and God, um, and let us now turn to the font as we stand, that we might begin in confession, that we may hear God's unconditional promise of love and forgiveness. God, whose love never quits, Help us admit that we have been wrong. Give us the word the world cannot. Tell us again you believe in us so that we can love ourselves and each other like you do. Amen. We find ourselves lost. We convince ourselves we are unlovable. We wonder if God is against us. We find ourselves dirty. Sometimes we are deep down in a dark hole. When we feel old and used up, we wonder if our life is going anywhere. When we are totally stuck with no hope of change. When we live under the control of habits and addictions. When we feel ugly dressed in dirty rags. When we are beyond help, beyond mercy. People of God, hear this good news. Where we so often fail, God has succeeded. You are completely forgiven of everything, not because of anything you've done yourself, but because God is because of God's great love for you in Jesus Christ. Forgiveness does not come only today, but in every moment. And so Right now, together, we begin a new life again. In the name of God, our creator, lover, and sustainer. Amen. Please be seated.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you have promised. Make us love what you command through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite our children to come on over. Good morning. That's quite the trek you make. I appreciate it. How are you guys doing today? This seems a little loud to me still. I, I don't know about the... Okay, okay. So here we are. How's it going today? Wow, a little delay, but I will take it. Good, I'm glad to hear things are good. Oh my goodness, you get to spend some time with a friend. That sounds fun. Well, you know what? I am going to ask you to do something for me today, all right? Anytime I say something that you like, I want you to go, yay. Can we just practice that for a minute? Something you like, and you go. <laughs> wow, all right. I know you're gonna be here with me on this, okay? You just need to hear something you like. So the other thing is, if you hear something you don't like, then I want you to kind of have a whine. Let's have a little whiny voice. I know you don't ever whine, but just pretend with me, okay? So a little whiny voice goes, aw, but, yeah, oh, you sound pretty good. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. So when something that you like, you, we say, yay. Something you don't like, we'll go, aw, but, okay? Are you with me? Okay, I just wanna make sure. All right, so what do you say when you hear, hey, let's go out to eat? <laughs> All right, your own version, that's okay. A yay and a yow, all right, we'll take it. What happens when you hear, it's time for your bath or shower? Oh. <laughs> I love the creativity. Yes, go okay. good. What happens when you hear, hey, who would like some candy? Yeah, yeah and yay, all right. And what happens when you hear, oh, it's time to shut that off, it's time for bed? That's good. What happens when you hear, oh, you can have time to play Minecraft? Yeah. <laughs> I know the magic button here, yes. What happens when you hear, it's time to do your chores? Uh. <laughs> wow. Okay, we get a little stronger reaction here, some places than others, but you get the point, right? When we have things that we like, Yay! When we have those things we don't like, ah, or no, ah. Well, the thing is, doing your chores, taking a shower, going to bed, not fun, not things we always like, but they're kind of necessary and important in our lives, aren't they? Nonetheless, nonetheless, whether we like them or not, right? Along with the fun things. Well, that's kind of what happens today when Jesus is in his local synagogue in Nazareth and he's preaching and teaching and he says things that the people like and they're like yeah they're so impressed so excited for him and then he goes on to say some things that are true but not as much what people want to hear and then they go they get angry and they want to run him off a cliff. You know, he tells them, God is going to set the oppressed free. And they're excited about that good news. 
But then when he says, but you know, it's for everyone, including your enemies and those people you don't like. Those were hard words to hear for them. And it's tough sometimes for us today. And yet it is important for us to know that if we receive God's love, God's liberation, God's freedom in life, that that means it is for all. There are no favorites. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, there are sometimes things that we do not like to hear, even though they are good and true. Be with us in those moments. Keep our hearts and our minds open, knowing that you love us and you want the best for us, as well as our neighbor and even those we might not like. All these things we lift up and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for coming up. You guys were great. A reading from Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See today that I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. God comes to us in the word. psalm is spoken today, and we will start with the uh, lectern side, I think. Yes, lectern side uh, will take the unbold verses, and the organ side will take the bold verses. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall always be of you. A reading from 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for the tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part 
and we will prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. And when I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, but I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. Now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. God comes to us in the word. God comes to us where we are. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me the proverb, Doctor, cure yourself, and you will say, do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did in Capernaum. And he said, truly, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill of which their town was built, so that they might hurl him over the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In our gospel today, we pick up where we left off last week. Jesus' reputation has grown around the region as an amazing preacher and teacher and healer. And now he's come back to Nazareth, his hometown, and is at the local synagogue reading scripture and preaching. And just from his reading, everyone gets a sense of his presence and authority. Everyone is ready to sing his praises, taking, you know, just a little bit of ownership on the fame that Jesus has found in other towns. And you know how when you travel around the country and you will see signs like, home of Lincoln, or birthplace of Johnny Cash, or Laura Ingalls might have lived here. That day, the Nazarenes are ready to put up the sign at the edge of town, home of Jesus, son of Joseph. But then Jesus seriously blows it. Because right in the middle of all of their accolades, he continues preaching the hard truth. It's as if he is saying, when I talk about God coming to free the oppressed and bless the poor, this includes God's blessing 
to the people you can't stand, the people that you don't want to be near, the people you think are your enemies. And then reminds them of a couple of stories in their own scripture. Through Elijah and Elisha, God blesses not Israel, but Israel's enemies, both foreigners and pagans, the widow of Zarephath and Naaman from Syria. Jesus has the guts to tell them and us. You won't be able to claim God's blessing for your life unless you claim them for other people's lives at the same time. Their response, they are livid. It is hard to hear an uncomfortable truth without getting defensive and angry, responding, how dare you talk to me that way? And so here we are at the very onset of Jesus' ministry. And let's face it, that's pretty much the way it usually is. Because this text, this story, and Luke's whole gospel, for that matter, isn't about Jews or Romans. It isn't about Nazarenes or Jerusalemites. Luke's main message is this. God came to redeem everyone. And when we focus on the redeem, boy, that's good news. But when we focus on the everyone and call to mind all those we believe have done us wrong or who frighten us or who are different or who seem weird or undeserving, that same line is terrifying. You know, there's a Jewish story that tells of the good fortune of a hard-working farmer. The Lord appeared to the farmer and granted him three wishes, but with the condition that whatever the Lord did for the farmer, uh, for the farmer would be given double, double to his neighbor. So the farmer, scarcely believing his good fortune, wished for a hundred cattle. And immediately he received a hundred cattle and he was overjoyed until he saw that his neighbor had two hundred. So he wished for a hundred acres of land and again he was filled with joy until he saw that his neighbor had two hundred acres of land. And rather than celebrating God's goodness, the farmer could not escape feeling jealous and slighted because his neighbor had received more than he. And finally, he stated his third wish, that God would strike him blind in one eye. And God wept. That hometown crowd believes that they deserve privileges because Jesus is one of them after all. And when Jesus says no favorites, no extra privileges, it is for everyone, well, we see how that turns out. Violent rejection. There's a quote from Anne Lamott that I have probably shared with you before, but it's one I repeat to myself and I think worth repeating. You can safely assume you've created God in your own image when it turns out that God hates all the same people that you do. Now perhaps we'd like to think that in hearing this truth, we 
would have immediate transformation that takes place, that unlike those closed-minded Nazarenes, we would be open to the truth and forever altered, and that life would never be the same again. And yes, there are times when that is certainly true and happens. Yet all too often, the desire for normalcy outweighs the call for change. Our demand for constancy and predictability overshadows our correction. Our avoiding difficulty results in complacency. And perhaps we don't even recognize that moment for what it is and then choose rejection over truth. Like the Nazarenes, like the farmers, the farmer, like me, because I know I have been there. In how many ways do we reject Jesus and their mission, our message of liberation? How have we snuffed out the light of Christ and traded a world-changing gospel for a feel-good and deluded message of comfort and privilege? And so we bring our dashed hopes, our suspicions, our fears to the first cliff we can find, pushing them over the edge uh, uh, to ensure our own security, safety, and salvation. Yet, Jesus pushes through our walls of resistance, our facades of tolerance, our determined denial toward that which will truly bring engaging, authentic new life. And in Jesus' death and resurrection, we discover that Jesus' word not only reveals the truth about us, but also reveals the truth about God about a God so compassionate for God's people that God takes on our lot and our life, becomes one of us, even at the point of dying for us, only to come back and bring again a word of forgiveness and grace. For this God loves all of God's children. Desperately, passionately, relentlessly, and that includes you and me, and also those we deem unworthy of such a gift. Because guess what? None of us is worthy, and yet it is given. And in the face of this unconditional love we experience, vulnerability and renewal. For God's love is tenacious. God's love will continue to chase after us, seeking to hold on to us and redeem us all the days of our lives, no matter what. And being drawn back into God's love we lose all claims to why we deserve something and presumably others do not, as we recognize that the word deserving has no place in the kingdom of God. And when Jesus tells us the truth about ourselves simply because it is the truth, we have to give up the pretense, surrender every claim to having it all together, to being perfect, or to being in some exclusive club. And in a word, when Jesus tells the truth about ourselves, we die. But when Jesus goes on and does something crazy, not only telling us about, uh, but really showing us, the truth about God, then we come alive again. 
We come alive in the Spirit of God who not only knows everything about us, but loves us anyway. A God who loves us so much that God will go to any length to redeem us from all the pettiness, shame, and fear that seems so often to overrun even the most successful lives. When we accept the hard truth about our lives, maybe for now at least, we are all called together to live in this story and others like it, which push us out of our comfort places and assumptions and old ways of thinking. And perhaps by hearing Jesus' words of challenge today, meant for all of us, we will be changed in ways that matter and that can make a difference. For on this day, and on most any day, we do so need to be reminded that God is in charge of this story, of our stories, and the larger story where we find our homes. You know, our gospel story ends today in this mysterious and hopeful way. Jesus, passing through the midst of them, goes on his way. The good news is that we can't get rid of him too easily. This hometown boy not only brings the truth, he is the truth and is willing to risk everything so that everyone might be redeemed and saved. May we rejoice in this truth. May we come alive in Christ's love. And may we in an, uh, uninhibitedly share this love, this good news, with everyone. Amen.
Let us continue by confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Prayers of Intercession. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Guide your church in ways of faith, hope, and love. Cultivate ministries and communities of compassion that bear witness to your endearing presence among us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Teach us to live in humility on the earth. Curb arrogance that leads to destruction of natural resources and disregard for future generations. Inspire the work of scientists who urge us to live in harmony with your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are the refuge of all who seek hope and freedom. Accompany immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers who cross borders to find safety and opportunity. Support indigenous populations who struggle with the legacy of racism and cultural misappropriation. Embolden leaders to draft compassionate policies on behalf of migrants and those who assist them. God of grace, hear our prayer. Love bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Comfort with your love all who are lonely, fearful, and brokenhearted. Sustain the hope of all those who suffer in body or spirit, especially Arlene, Steve, Anne, Nan, Susie, Paige, Dolores, Leon, Ginger, Phil, Gregory, Julie, Dan and Maria, Lois, Barb, Eric, Mavis, and the family of friends of Norm Cunai. And for those other concerns we offer silently, out loud, or in the comments of our live feed. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your grace falls upon young and old alike. Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and in this community. Give us humble hearts to follow their leadership. Inspire us with their laughter, their insight, and their curiosity. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for those who have gone before us and now see you face to face, face to face, especially Norm. Abide with us in this mortal life until we rest in the arms of your never ending love. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us take time and share Christ's peace with one another. Don't forget those on the live feed. Peace be with you. Sure, you may be seated for a moment as we, uh, I just give great thanks for each and all of you. Um, 
for all of the mission uh, that we can do together because of your commitment, your kindness, your compassion, your gifts. Thank you uh, that we are in this together. So, um, and if you do have offerings that you'd like to share, there are offering boxes at um, the back of each by the door. And now, I hope that gave you enough time. I would invite you to stand as you are able, and let's continue with our communion. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. And through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink saying, this is a new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your spirit bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. All is now ready. You may come forward as the ushers will help guide and direct you. A reminder that we have, for safety precautions, we have the all-in-one um, kind of little communion kits. So just a reminder, please turn it upside down and peel off so that you can have, and the peels are easy on these, um, peel off and receive the wafer, and then you can tip it back up and peel off to have um, the juice. And it is all grape juice um, in these. Uh, and so those online uh, and those who are here, come to God's table, there is a place for you and enough for all. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Let us come.
you are able and receive the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his love and grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now, God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ into a weary world. Share the good news.